should I say? Yes, yeah, someone wanted to know what a nut burger was. Well, um, a nut burger is it's a word I coined a few years ago, and I've been trying to get it into the popular lexicon, so please feel free to use it at every available opportunity in the next few days. And what a nut burger is really is someone whose thought process is so different than your own that the only logical explanation you can come up with for their, the, what they're saying or thinking or doing is that they are totally bonkers because you just cannot understand their thought process. <laughs> we have a nut burger right down here. <laughs> um, perhaps I should ask at the end for all the nut burgers to stand up. Um, it doesn't mean that they are insane, it's just that it's the only explanation you can come up with because they're so different. How they think is so different from how you think. If you're familiar with the book by Richard Florida called The Creative Class, the gist of the book is that cities, to whatever size they may be, to grow and to thrive have to welcome nut burgers, basically. People who think very differently. <laughs> People who are the creative thinkers, whether they be artists or writers or scientists or engineers, whatever they may be. Over the years in Hutchinson, I live here in Hutchinson, um, we've had a number of meetings of various sorts about ways to increase population, ways to make the community more attractive. And invariably, during one of these meetings, I'll be asking a question or making a suggestion and the result will be a stunned silence from everyone else in the room. And at one point I realized, oh my gosh, I'm the nut burger in this group. I, I didn't know that. Um, but uh, because in my head it's all perfectly logical, but in their heads they're going, what? And invariably someone, very kind soul, would change the subject to keep me from embarrassing myself any further. So I tried to look at myself as objectively as a person can, and I thought, well, you know, I do sew funny things on my clothes and wear gaudy vintage jewelry and, you know, sometimes show up at meetings with paint still on my hands, so maybe that's why people think I'm a little off kilter. Although I live here now in a town of about 40,000 people, I grew up in a very rural place in Kentucky. I grew up three and a half miles outside the nearest town, which had a few hundred people in it. And um, to give you an idea of how rural it is, my last name is Terrell, and the road is Terrell Road, although it didn't have a name when I was growing up on it. And it now dead ends at my brother's farm. So it's pretty rural. <laughs> and one of the, the things that you realize if you're from a smaller community is that in a small community, there are not enough people that you can discount anyone. You have to take everyone's views into account. There just aren't enough people to go around to accomplish whatever you're trying to do. And if you think back about, there was a television show a few years ago called Northern Exposure. If you think about that old television show, it was a set in rural Alaska, and it was a group of people who some people might say were nut burgers, who had all chosen to live in this rather isolated area for a reason. But when it came down to it, they could not afford to discount anyone's view because there were so few people to do whatever they were trying to do. And I think that's something about small towns that maybe gets lost a little bit as you scale up on the population scale. And I think one of the things that the creative class is telling us to do is to, to reconsider that. How this all ties into social media is that I've noticed since I've been involved in social media and since other people in town, it's become more of a thing to be involved in social media in the area, is that because people have a different way to get to know me, they think I'm a little bit less of a nut burger than they might have thought, you know, a couple of years ago. Because while I might be posting pictures of some weird thing I've painted or writing some weird thing or whatever, they'll also see that I post things about science and history and math and other topics that are much more in the mainstream. And they might think, oh, well, you know, maybe she's not totally insane. Maybe she's just a little bit nuts. 
So it gives people a different way to know me, and the conversation can then start in a different place when you know people on a different level. The other thing about it is that it gives you a chance to see who else you're connected to. And if people see, oh, well, gosh, you know, she's connected to Bob over here. Well, Bob is a nice, normal person, and I like Bob, so maybe it's okay for me to, you know, listen to what she has to say, because Bob says she's okay. So it's a different way to get the message out that you might not be quite as off-kilter as people might initially believe. And in conclusion, I just want to say that, you know, there are people who have piercings, there are people who have tattoos, there are people who show up to meetings with paint on their hands. They can indeed have something valuable to offer. So when they extend that tattooed hand to you for a handshake, take it. Something really amazing might happen from that partnership. Thank you.